In this video, we have the new, brand new, just released Castle Mamba Micro X2 motor and ESC combo up to 4S capable within crawlers. So we are going to get this thing out of the box. We are going to run it head to head versus the brushed setup that we have in this Element Ecto and see how good really is it. Welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. What you'll tend to find on the channel is me bashing and crawling and drifting and racing, plus some product review videos and how-tos. And I am really excited about this one. It's kind of funny. I've been sitting here for a long time now thinking about some small drone batteries that I have that are 4S, pretty small, kind of 1500, 1800 milliamp hour that would go perfect in this truck, but yet no crawler ESC that's out on the market is actually 4S capable until this one came out. And so we are going to get it installed. We're going to test it and see how it goes. I'll be honest, so that is a small but really, really cool looking ESC right there. Just to give you an idea, I measure somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 millimeters long and a little bit under, a little shy under 30 millimeters wide. That is a small little footprint for a 4S brushless sensored ESC for sure. So mounting that and getting that in the truck, I hope is not going to be an issue. Uh, same thing, good news here, the, the motor wires do come pre-wired. Those are really, really long motor wires. So I may actually unsolder them and shorten them up some before we actually put it in the truck. We'll see. We'll just look at how it all lays out. It does come with a sensor cable block off plate if you're not going to be using it. it. Comes with screws to mount the motor. It does come with the sensor wire. So that is really, really nice. Um, when you look at the specs right here, so it is talking about, you know, when you get into some smaller vehicles, 18th, 14th scale vehicles, you know, you're allowed to do that in the smaller weights, but you can do low speed crawling up to nine pounds. So we will really be putting this thing to the, to the test. I do not believe this truck, this Ecto is anywhere near a nine pound truck. So that is completely fine. Uh, low speed crawling. I'd be curious to see what do they really mean by that? So is this going to be a mistake or are we good with it are we not yes there is that 4s lipo max the bec you can go from five and a half volts up to seven and a half volts so that is programmable very nice two amps on that yes waterproof <laughs> waterproof is yes with an asterisk which means not really fully submersible and you may end up still screwing some stuff up lastly here it does say that for crawlers it does suggest a greater than 2000 milliamp battery and 30 c shouldn't be a problem if i use those drone batteries i'm talking about they're around that 2000 milliamp but they're something like 100 120 c so i imagine from that side it will be completely fine so before we swap out the motor and esc we're going to take Take the truck in its stock form for a couple little drives so what we're going to look for is controllability you know super slow crawl speed all these kind of things um a little maybe a little bit of runtime kind of trying to look at that but this is all stock this is the ecto this is the ready esc the stock motor that came in it nothing has changed at all
couple things to highlight here as we're putting this in. So first, this pinion actually needs to be flipped on the stock motor, um, 550 cam, plus also just the dimensions of it. Uh, the pinion was actually turned around, but in order to get proper mesh with this can, you do need to flip it around. Fortunately, you got plenty of room. You got plenty of room for it and everything, so not a big deal at all. Second thing is uh, from Element, they actually have these nice shouldered, like big flat washer head screws for the motor mounts. The problem is they are too long for this castle motor. The castle motor does fortunately come with its own screws and you will need to use those. I um, haven't figured out yet. I think I don't need a washer behind them, but I, I might. I'm actually probably going to put a small washer behind the heads of these just to make sure that I'm distributing that force appropriately across these slotted uh, holes here. There we are. Look, ESC is mounted. You see the receivers here. All the wires are hooked up. I'm not really happy with this right now. I got a lot of extra wire here, even with this, how much as I shortened those motor lead wires. I still have a lot of wire there. Uh, sensor wires also pretty long, so I need to find a better way of tying these up and getting them out of the way, but they should be safe there for right now. The ESC does come with, of course, the lead that plugs into channel 2 on the receiver. It also comes with a uh, plug that you can put into the third channel so that you can actually change the program on the fly with a third channel. I have this switch up here. I don't know what I'm going to do for programming that yet, so I have left it unplugged to make sure that it doesn't backfeed or create any kind of craziness with the ESC just like that. It is now time. We need to get a battery in this. We need to calibrate it and we need to see if I've screwed it up or if the wheels turn. That's why you need to set it on some tires or something. <laughs> what we have so far with the stock controller, either either I'm an idiot or it just doesn't quite want to work together right. Maybe both. I don't know. Um, and so with calibrating it in the throttle normal position, uh, it calibrates appropriately, but everything is backwards. So forward is reverse, reverse is forward. If all I do is simply flip the switch, then it goes into, it's clearly not at the neutral position. So the throttle's not 50-50 forward and reverse. And so it sees it as a throttle input to some degree. If I switch it, it runs in the correct direction, but unfortunately there's no zero here. Now I can, I could just throttle trim it out. It's not really what we want to do though, right? Like that's not really the right way of going about this. Um, and so I need to do something different. If I try to calibrate it in the reverse direction to the ESC, it just doesn't work for some reason. It doesn't like that. So I believe what I need to do is I need to, in order to run this properly, I actually need the Castle Link software and the adapter in order to program this. Now the vehicle, it does come with a coupon for a free Castle Link USB adapter, which is super cool, except I don't have it. So, um, or a field tuning card, which I might actually um, probably prefer that, maybe. But yeah, 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 yeah. So here I am with my truck, quasi undrivable because the free thing that they will let you have is not included in the thing. That, I mean, honestly. I guess if you're a Castle fan and you already have like 10 of these or something, or you already have one, then it doesn't matter. It's kind of like me and Hobbywing program cards. I have, I mean, like literally there's one here just laying on the desk because they're just, they're just always around um, because I have so many of them. Uh, so I feel it's maybe something similar to that. I don't know. Let me look at this and see what else I can find. Since I don't have the USB programmer, we're going to actually just fix it with throttle trim for right now so that I can get out and try it and I can show you guys how this thing works. I have my CNHL. This is an 1800 milliamp 4S battery. Look at that thing wedge itself right in there perfectly. Literally fits perfect. The other thing I do have, if I'm really getting kind of wild with it, I have these 4S 850 milliamp batteries that we can also give a shot in there. Super lightweight, great for maybe some small you know comp crawling kind of stuff so that should be fun and so we're going to get this in here i got this battery in here first we're going to give it a, get the battery body on and give it a shot
so it's good, but here's the problem. Since I'm running it in throttle reverse mode, uh, backwards is faster than forwards. We are back after that first run and honestly ESC and the motor literally like ambient conditions. I mean they have not gotten warm at all. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this setup, right? Um, especially compared to standard brushed ones. So really the power is good as you saw in my reverse. So pro is, man, you can run 4S in a crawler now. Seriously, that's crazy. You can run 4S and man, power is going to be there. You're going to have everything that you need. Small little 4S batteries can be had very easily. So it's kind of cool. You can, you're can you one of the first, you're kind of on the, the leading edge of 4S crawling. Is this the new standard? I don't know. So that's really good efficiency of the brushless setup i ran that whole time out in the backyard kind of crawling around and stuff and when i came back in the battery hadn't even hardly really changed voltage yet so so that's a good thing right nice and efficient i really like that that's really appreciated when you're out there on the trail to get that nice long trail run time uh so throttle control and modulation even though i'm clearly not set up quite right for it yet um was there you had nice slow crawl could really control what the truck was doing pretty well um so that is those are all really good positive things for it on the negative side clearly if you are new to castle like i am you don't already have the usb programmer you don't already have that castle link or the field programmer you're kind of in trouble like you can't really get it unless you're lucky and your transmitter just happens to calibrate in the correct direction with it mine did not uh in case you're lucky like you may not be able to run it right off so if you're spending the 180 plus dollars for this setup already you then also need to get that usb the castle link system again coupon for it to be free once you've bought it but now i got it here now i gotta get this and i gotta go to the website and i gotta put my code in and i gotta wait for this to get here so that kind of sucks right like truck's gonna sit here we're certainly not taking it out on the trail today with how it drives right now we're gonna wait so either buy it ahead of time i don't know how much they are so I'm going to go look like maybe you just buy it ahead of time to heck with the few free coupon. Like, I don't know, you know, that, so that's unfortunate. So plan that into your build. If you're going to use this and you don't have the castle link already, you need to plan that in. Now, really at the end of the day, is it better than a brushed setup? I think it's better than the stock element brush setup stock element brush setup. The, the motor's great. 14 turn 550. That's in the element stock is a, Honestly, I really like that motor. Um, the ESC and the with the controller don't have the greatest throttle modulation. So there's that, um, that this seems to be already better with. And I imagine once I get it tuned with the Castle Link is even better. But I still come back. I still come back to the end of the day. Hobbywing 1080 plus a Holmes Hobbies motor. Like for less than half for way less than half price you can still be up and running and crawl over everything you can still run 3s like it's still so hard to beat that hobby wing 1080 and the holmes hobby motor so before you make a decision on buying this castle link i want you to come over here i'm going to leave a link right over here to that exact video of running a Hobbywing 1080 Holmes motor versus the Hobbywing Fusion so that you can kind of get a little bit more in depth on what I'm talking about here because I don't know yet if this brushless power is really worth it. So be on the lookout for some follow-up videos. I'm going to get the castle link. We're going to do some programming. We're going to do some setup. Check out that other video and be on the lookout for some more and we will see you in those. Thank you and goodbye.